Are you still sad that you missed out on the SBG E263 Eagle? Well folks, now is your chance to get the next best thing aesthetically in the SBG N023. This is Grand Seiko's 140th anniversary this year, and to commemorate this, we have a limited edition piece that is supposed to reflect Kentaro Hattori, who founded Seiko's vision in a timepiece that offers high precision, durability, and ease of use. And yes, this is a quartz watch, but why is it a quartz? Because quartz is truly the easiest to use and most accurate movement that a watch can have. Plus, this is no ordinary quartz, which we will discuss. And this one is about Hattori's vision, which this watch truly embodies. What's up everyone, it's Chris with the Little Treasury Channel. Welcome back. This is where we bring you awesome watch content at least once a week. If you haven't already, please make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be alerted as soon as we upload. I'm from Little Treasury Jewelers, which is located in Gambrels, Maryland. And it's where you go when you're in the know. As always, the watches that I review are for sale and can be purchased, so please see the description below to contact us. In last week's video, we reviewed the Seiko SLA-042, which is a big, fun tuna that is made out of ceramic and titanium materials. I highly recommend checking this one out if you are after something fun to wear or just a very purposeful built diver. Wrist check time. It's a Grand Seiko video, so I'm wearing my Grand Seiko SBGA 211 Snowflake, which if you are familiar, it's the flagship piece for Grand Seiko, and I love mine, and I really love how light it is, personally. Now tell me which watch you're wearing today while you're watching the video and make sure to tell me why. Now let's get on to the features. The SBGN023 has a 40 millimeter case width, a 13.6 millimeter thickness, a 46.5 millimeter lug to lug, a 20 millimeter lug width, and weighs in at 172.90 grams. It has a new case, which I would describe as an angular cushion that has broad areas of matte finish on the sides and small stripes of Zeratsu along the edges and tops of the lugs. A screw down crown can be found offset at the four position. The bezel is ceramic and is black with the GMT type in white even numerals and lines that represent the odd numbers. The dial is brown and has a similar style to the Eagle dial, but the grooves that radiate from the center are straight and they're not curved like the Eagle. A day and night grade can be found on the chapter ring, which links to the GMT type, and the day hours are highlighted in gold, while the night hours are in black. But a gold ring is present at the bottom still. Grand Seiko and GS can be found at the top middle portion in gold. The indices are high polished with stripes of loom in the center of each, and are rectangular except for the 12, which is more of a trapezoid. The hour and minute hands are Dauphine style, but have chopped off tips while the second hand is just a simple line. The GMT hand is in gold to match the day indicator and has a simple arrow at the tip. GMT can be found in gold at the bottom middle portion. The date window can be found offset at the four position and has a white background with black numerals. Loom can be found on all dial markers and on the hour and minute hands. It is an illusion that looks like the other pips are glowing above each marker due to the crystal. The case back is closed and has an 18 karat gold lion emblem in the center of it, with limited edition in large writing above. You will see 18 karat plus ceramics plus stainless steel at the bottom to remind you of how awesome the materials are. The movement is Grand Seiko's in-house 9F86 caliber, which is a quartz movement that is accurate to 10 seconds per year. If you aren't familiar, Grand Seiko grows their own quartz crystals for use in these and only picks the top performers to actually be used. They call this movement a twin pulse quartz because it actually ticks twice between each second and your naked eye can only see one tick. This delivers a high torque for the large hands, which keeps them all moving precisely and perfectly on each dial marker. The battery in these movements typically lasts for about three years. The bracelet is totally matte finished and is extremely easy to polish if you get it dinged up. It has a simple folding buckle with GS on it and no micro adjust can be found. The SBGN023 is limited to 2,021 pieces to commemorate Seiko's 140th anniversary and is ready to bring high precision and durability into your life for a wonderful $5,450. Now for my humble opinion. 
Okay, so I know that this is a quartz, and I'm sure that that just disqualifies it for some of you. It really shouldn't, though. I'm proud of this quartz because it's insanely accurate at 10 seconds per year, and the ticks are so precise and strong. I really think that this one is worth looking into because of the total package here. This new case looks really nice on my 6.5 inch wrist, and is just a bit more aggressive than the other SBGN cases. I'm wondering if this case is maybe too small for a spring drive to be installed, and that's why there's only quartz available in it. This case really picks up all sorts of light and has truly beautiful angles. I also like the matte finished bracelet on this one, which will be harder to see scratches on and easily buffed out in the future. I like the color combination on this. While it is a bit darker than the Eagle, it really reminds me of the Eagle, and that is one of my favorite pieces that Grand Seiko has ever made, but it's just really not attainable for many people since only 110 of them were out. This piece does feel very special, and you can just look at it and tell that it isn't just a standard issue model. It has a special vibe to it. I really recommend this piece for anyone that's looking to add a collectible and very attractive one to their collection, and perhaps love the Eagle color scheme but just missed it. Thanks for watching today, everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please make sure to smash that subscribe button, give this video a like, and share this with your friends. I look forward to seeing you next video.